Okay, I had one of my MBA students ask me how to do this problem, and um, I thought it might be an interesting problem to show you how to how to do. I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to use Excel Solver, and then I'm going to solve it with the equation that will give you the exact solution. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'll copy this over into Excel. By the way, this is from uh, the software Asepi. So it's the software I use for my MBA class. And uh, so here's the problem. And we'll go ahead and put in what we're given. And uh, so to save time, let me just go ahead and uh, copy and paste since I worked this problem out beforehand. Um, so this is what we're given. We're given a... Uh, Standard deviations and expected returns for two stocks and a correlation coefficient of 0.29. And we can find the standard deviation for the minimum variance portfolio. Okay. Um, so what we can do, uh, first I'm going to set it up with Solver. And uh, let me do this. So for a solution, uh, so we're going to go, this is equal to stock one, this is equal to stock two. So the weights sometimes are called X. And uh, so if you say if you put 50% of your money into stock one, well, you, you would put equals one minus 50% into stock two. So in order to do this problem this way, you have to put stock two as, a, as an equation. And then if you did it correctly, they should sum up to 100%. So you, you want to put formulas in here and here. And uh, so, so so that way if I change this to 25%, this will automatically change to 75%, but you still spend 100% of your money. So if you had like $1,000, 250 would go here, 750 would go here. You spend $250 on shares of stock one and $750 on shares of stock two. So the expected return is pretty easy. It's just the weighted average. And the easiest way to do a weighted average on Excel is something called sum product. And we'll just go sum product of these two weights times these two expected, whoop, times these two expected returns. And so my expected return is, I uh, will put that in percent, is uh, 10%. So as we change, and again, as we change these weights, my expected return on my portfolio is going to change because if I did 0% in stock one, it should be 9% because that would be 100% in stock two. If I did 100% in stock one, it should be 13% because I have 0% in stock two. And anything in between would just be a weighted average of the two. And we do something similar for the standard deviation. There's an equation for that. Let me go ahead and put this equation in here so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the equation out of the book. And uh, so it says the variance is equal to the... Now, when you see this X1, it also it could be either W or it could be X, right? Um, I usually like to use W for weight. It makes more sense to me. But some formulas call it, put it X. So don't let that confuse you. So if I want to do the variance, it's going to be equal to uh, the weight in 1 squared times um, the, the variance of 1, which is this squared, because that's the, the variance is going to be the standard deviation squared, plus uh, the weight of 2 squared, and that's going to be times the variance of stock 2, which is the standard deviation squared. And then it's going to be plus uh, 2 times the weight of 1 and the weight times the weight of 2, times the weight of 1, times the weight of 2, times the correlation coefficient. Whoops. Oops, I forgot the times. Okay, let me go back. I want to make sure I got this right. So it's going to be 2 times the weight of 1 times the weight of 2. So it's going to be times the weight of 1 times the weight of 2 times the correlation coefficient times the standard deviation of 1 times the standard deviation of 2. So that's the variance. So to get the, the standard deviation, we have to take the square root of that, right? And so... So what did I do? I probably made some kind of little mistake. Let me check. Um, I think that's probably right. We'll find out when we when we get the answer. So um, so 
So that's the equation you use to find that. And uh, let me go ahead and put the formulas in here. Kind of nice because this color codes it, right? This squared times that squared plus that squared times that squared plus 2 times that times that times that times that times that square root of it all. So it looks right. Okay, so, I'm, so I said I was going to use solver to solve this. So I'll show you how to use solver. So they want the standard deviation for the minimum variance portfolio, right? So we want to make we want to make this as small as possible. So we're going to change these. I'll, I'll just show you how this works. So I'll go to data. I'll go to solver. And I'm going to reset all because I like to whenever I open up solver, I like to make sure it's you know if I have another thing I've done in there, I want to make sure I get rid of it. Yeah. So I want to set I want to set um, this variance to a minimum, right? So I'm going to so this has to be that. That's the variance. I want to set it to a minimum by changing this weight. Now, the reason I'm just changing that weight is because uh, uh, I already have. A, I'm going to I'm going to set a constraint that that this, this has to be one, and it automatically adjusts this other weight. So the constraint I'll add is I'll say this equals one, and go OK, and then. Um, and we'll we'll make unconstrained negative. I don't want these weights to be negative. If you made them negative, you would be actually shorting stocks. We don't need to do that. You would just go solve at this point. And uh, so I'm I'm gonna take my solution. So this should work. So I could just take this and copy it. And if we did it correctly, I could paste it in here, and we got it right. Now this actually shows you how to do it the correct the the exact solution. I'll show you that next. So let's go back to Excel. So to do the exact solution um, using an equation. By the way, this shows you should put uh, uh, fifteen point eight seven percent of your money on stock one and eighty four point eight three percent of your money, and that would be that would give you a return of that, and this would be my minimum standard deviation. Okay, um, so that was, that's the answer to the question, right? But basically, you're adjusting these weights using using a solver in order to minimize that. So now we'll do it exactly. So the exact equation looks like this. I'll just put it down here below. So we want to know what weight. Remember, this is W one. So we'll, maybe we could go. Uh, uh, we could go. I'm gonna go equal stock one. Remember, weights can be either W or X. So we're going to be we're going to solve for this one. So it's equal to parentheses the standard deviation of two squared. So this is the standard deviation of two. We want to square it. That's the variance minus the standard deviation of one times the standard deviation of two times the correlation coefficient. So that's in the numerator. So I'm going to put parentheses around that, and that's going to be divided by parentheses. The variance of one squared, or the standard deviation of one squared, which is the variance of one, and then it's going to be plus uh, the variance of two. Whoops, sorry. The variance of two, and then we're going to subtract uh, two times the standard deviation of one times the standard deviation of two times the correlation coefficient, and that's all. In uh, parentheses on the numerator or denominator, and we get this 0.1587. And guess what? That's the same thing as we had uh, right here, right? So uh, I can copy. I copy that format, make it percent. Remember, this is equal to one minus this, and then that's just the sum of that. And then we could calculate. Uh, the, the, we could calculate these two things. It's actually all we have to do is just uh, uh, well, from that point you would just do these two things here again, right? And you could calculate the standard deviation. I have no use doing it twice. I could copy this down, paste it down here. The only thing is we have to adjust all these, right? These all go, these all go up, right? So they're going to go. This one goes up to here. So goes up. Whoop. This this one goes up to here, 
This is kind of the beauty of Excel. You just move everything up exactly how far you. Let me try it again. You move everything up exactly how far you copied it down. One more time. I got to move this last one up to below. Let's see what did I do wrong? Uh, B sixteen squared times B three. Plus B C sixteen times C three. Yeah. Sometimes it's better just to do things from, from scratch. So this equals some product of these comma these right why is that not working okay I had to pause the video I see what I did I put these I put these on the standard deviations instead of the Man, I'm too big of a hurry. Some product of uh, some product of these two. Some product of not the standard deviation, but the expected return. And then this, let's we'll start again. This is equal to um, the weight of one squared times the variance of one squared plus the weight of two squared times the variance of 2 or the standard deviation of 2 squared that's going to be plus 2 times this times this times this times this times this and we're going to put the square root of R all around that because that's a variance and we get the same answer okay so that's the two ways to do it Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much by clicking on the wrong thing there. Um, but anyway, um, whatever, whatever way you like better. Now, one thing I would say this exact solution, it will not work. It only works on two stock, two, two security or two stock portfolios. Once you get into more stocks, you can't come up with an exact solution. I, I believe you have to use solver after that point. You can't get an exact, uh, any equation for an exact solution. All right. So anyway, if you like that video, if you haven't subscribed, Click on my picture to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Hopefully that was helpful. See you next time.